Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the Kansas City real estate market. Let's dive in. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the Ask James Wise Show here on Holton Wise TV. I am your host, James Wise. That man behind the scenes is my guy, Tommy, cutting up the footage, editing it, bringing you guys these special effects, all the charts, the graphs, etc., etc. Now, today's show... You guys, this is your show, the Ask James Wise Show. You guys have questions about real estate investing. You ask them to us. You drop those in the comments below. We make videos answering them for you. And today's show is about the Kansas City market. A lot of folks are interested in the Kansas City market. And it's incredibly important that when you're trying to get information on a new market, you're trying to learn about that market to see if that market makes sense for you to invest, it's incredibly important that you learn from the people who actually live there, the people that are actually on the ground operating in that market on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, as you know, I am here operating in Cleveland. So you got a Cleveland question, you ask me and I will give you the answer because I am on the ground. Holton Wise, we manage thousands of doors here in the Cleveland market. But we do not manage anything in the Kansas City market. So what I did is I sat down with McKaylee from U.S. Reeb. U.S. Reeb is a turnkey company operating in three markets, Dayton, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. And for today's show, of course, Kansas City, Missouri. Let's take a look at the footage. Now, McKaylee, what do you do specifically at U.S. Reeb so everyone knows? So I am the um, executive portfolio manager at U.S. Reeb. So I follow the properties from the time that we acquire them through the rehab. And then I also work with the individual investors to sell the properties and, you know, situate them with the, the right property as well. Okay. Now, in the Ultimate Guide series, we grade all of the neighborhoods in a given market on an A to F scale. As far as what U.S. Reeb does, are you guys assisting investors in buying properties in every one of those grades or do you guys focus on a couple? We're focusing on just the A, B, and C grade. We found that those areas um, are the you know, safest for the investors and provide the best returns. Okay. So, Folks, obviously, if you click the show notes below, we have broken down every single zip code in the Kansas City market with the, with the grades. So let's start from the bottom up, Kaylee. D and F neighborhoods. You guys don't really uh, work in those neighborhoods too often. So it looks like from the information that uh, you and I have worked together to compile for all the investors here, Every one of the neighborhoods that fall under the DNF category in Kansas City are actually in the city of Kansas City itself. We got four zip codes over there. And what we see, you know, we see a very low owner occupied percentage. What type of experience could investors expect if they're investing in those four areas? And why don't you guys work with investors who want to target those areas? Um, so obviously every city is a little bit different. So what we've experienced for degrade neighborhoods in Kansas City, um, these neighborhoods are um, mostly located in industrial areas. So there's, you know, in industrial plants and everything surrounding the um, neighborhoods, there is not a lot of population um, in the areas and, you know, the price points can be you know, thirty to forty thousand dollars, and the rents are going to be pretty low, four to five hundred dollars. So, um, really, it's not a desirable place for people to live. So, we do see, um, you know, more vacancy in those areas, and um, you know, to you know, an investor is looking at a long-term plan for themselves. Um, exiting out of a D or F grade area is going to be a lot more difficult than, you know, A, B or C grade. Now, when you say thirty to forty thousand dollars with rents of four to five hundred a month, you know, you take somebody who's listening to the show and they're in like California. That's that's obviously insane. Uh, me being up in Cleveland, I, I comprehend that. You know, we have very similar stuff here. Just to clarify for everyone though, uh, when you say four to five hundred a month, is that for a like a three one single family home or would that be for a duplex unit? Um, I would either. So, um, multifamilies and single family rents are pretty comparable. Um, it's, you know, more so renting based off of the actual bedrooms or square footage. So I would say, you know, a 
yeah, three bedroom is probably going to rent for about that price. Okay. Now, up in the Cleveland market, just the way that the, the Ohio laws are written and the way that the water department is ran by the city, uh, when we do properties for investors in Cleveland, the owners, just based on all this, and guys, I have uh, info in the property management fact on HoltonWise.com with a more detailed explanation of why this is, but the moral of the story is the investors are the ones who have to pay for the water and sewer bill. And we're seeing an average of like 75 to 100 bucks a unit for water sewer usage. Now, in the Kansas City market, you know, if I'm an investor, I'm buying something that's like four to 500 bucks a month in rent. Is the tenant also paying their own water and sewer or do I have to pay that as well? Um, that, in, in all of our leases, we have the um, tenants responsible for the utilities. Um, and with that, um, sometimes, you know, um, tenants are going to be on like, you know, voucher assistant programs, especially in these areas. And in that case, a lot of the times the utilities are um, supposed to be included in the rent as well, meaning, yes, the owner would have to pay those. Okay, guys, that's super important. That's something that you definitely want to pay attention to when you're looking at these properties in these varying markets. So if you take a $40,000 property with a tenant paying $500 a month down in Kansas City, and you're comparing that to another property in another market, that would more or less be the same as a $40,000 property with a tenant paying maybe 650 or 700 in the Cleveland market because A, the water sewers paid by the tenants down there in Kansas City, and B, the property tax rates y'all got down there is definitely a lot lower. Everything I'm seeing and all of the data we've compiled is around, you know, 1.2 all the way up to just under one and a half percent we're up in the cleveland market we're two percent and above so when you guys are comparing your different markets that's very important so that's what we got in the dnf neighborhoods but michaela she don't feel those dnf neighborhoods she thinks they're too risky for you guys and i tend to agree with her so let's move up the ladder let's talk about the c neighborhoods what's you guys' business like in the c neighborhoods you got a lot of it a little bit what do you guys got going on in c neighborhoods um, so, you know, we've been in business for a little over five years, and I would say for the majority of our business, we've done a lot of C-grade um, areas, you know, dating back, like I said, over five and a half years ago when the properties used to sell fully rehabbed for $50,000, and now a lot of the areas are selling and appraising for $100,000. Um, so we've, we've had a lot of experience in the area. Um, we you know, still to this day manage a lot of properties in this area. I would say out of the 500 that we do manage, we manage about half of uh, C grade properties. So it is, you know, lower income areas. There is still, you know, like section eight and housing assistance programs, but typically the rents are gonna be um, for a two bedroom, like 750, three bedroom, you know, 800 and up. And, um, you know, these areas, you know, there's still, you know, some working class people. And like I said, it is appreciating and it's, um, you know, definitely more populated than the D and F grade areas. Now, we've more or less essentially doubled uh, our price point to get up into the C neighborhoods from the DNF neighborhoods, but we've also more or less doubled our rents. So in an apples to apples comparison, they're both about the same. And since they're both the same in a price to rent ratio aspect, I assume that's probably why you guys say screw the DNF neighborhoods because if we're, if we're the same on a, on a ratio aspect, why not take the lower risk, yeah? Yeah, definitely, I would agree with that. What type of, um, if I'm an investor, like talk to me like I'm a brand new dude, I've, I live in California. I've never been to the Midwest. I've never bought, I've never bought a rental property ever. And I, I'm sitting in front of you and I'm, I'm having a conversation with you and I, I'm jonesing for this $40,000 home, but you're trying to sell me this $100,000 home. What would you tell me I would, my experiences would be like that would be different if I were to buy each of the two? Um, so like we, you know, commented on the D grade, you know, $40,000 properties, there's, you know, a lot of risk just due to, you know, a lot of, not a lot of people are wanting to even live in the area. Um, so you're probably going to have higher vacancy. Um, and with the, you know, C grade properties, which, 
you know, they can be 100,000, like I said, but the average is probably 75 to 80,000 um, for those properties. And um, I mean, it's just going to be less risk. And, um, you know, just because there's you know, more working people in the area, um, Kansas City, the way that it's set up, um, the C grade area actually backs up right to the A grade area. So the C grade areas are very, you know, conveniently located in the city. It's about, you know, five minutes to downtown, five minutes to the Country Club Plaza. Um, you can really get anywhere. So what we're seeing too in these C grade areas, which obviously, um, you know, don't count on, but it's been an added bonus is you know, there's lots of gentrifying areas as well where, you know, like I said, the houses are now appraising over $100,000. More homeowners are moving into the area. Um, and so it's been, you know, for investors who I've, you know, coached through, you know, buying, um, you know, it's, it's higher cash flow and um, less risk. What, what type of a tenant base are we seeing? Are you guys seeing in your C-grade neighborhoods, are you guys seeing like uh, two, two working professionals with two incomes, college educated, or are we seeing like service industry workers? Like what, what, what type of tenant profile is typical at a C-class property in Kansas City with U.S. Reeb? So mostly, um, I would say, you know, families is, you know, mostly what we rent to because we do do, you know, two, three, four bedroom houses. Um, I would say uh, about half of those are probably um, assisted uh, living like with the Section 8 uh, vouchers. And so a lot of times, you know, those aren't, you know, working class, but um, they do have, you know, the Section 8 covering the rent. Um, and then, you know, for the other ones that aren't Section 8, our criteria for finding tenants, uh, we do require that they have to make two and a half times rent um, net to be able to qualify. And so, um, you know, that, you know, 800 times, you know, two and a half, they're going to make, you know, a, a decent income to, um, you know, live in the, the house and qualify as our tenant. I, I love Section 8. I, I like the fact that you're coming on here and you're, you're, you're bringing that to the forefront of the conversation. You get a lot of people that will bag on the Section 8. Um, you get it from the property man manager perspective, I think, because just dealing with the housing authority that runs the Section 8 program is it's just a total pain in the ass, right? It's, it's like, you know, you ask, you ask five employees the same question, you're going to get five different answers. So it's very tough on us as property managers. But at Holton Wise, we, we do handle Section 8 tenants for our clients, and it sounds like you guys do as well. I think as you go down you know, down the, the grading scale, right? Once you start going down into the C area and definitely in the DNF areas, Section 8 is a necessity because as you say, you know, half the folks down there are on it, but for the investors, it, it really solidifies their investment, right? Because as you go down, you know, the prices are cheaper, right? The rent to price ratios tend to get better, but the risk also goes up. And Section 8 typically alleviates that risk. How long has U.S. Reeb been working with Section 8 tenants, and are there any additional fees, if I'm an investor working with you, to purchase one of your properties that have a Section 8 tenant in it as opposed to a regular cash paying tenant? Because I know y'all are doing just a lot more logistical legwork dealing with Section 8 for these owners. Yeah, so we've been doing Section 8 ever since we have existed. Um, you know, just because there there are a lot of vouchers out in Kansas City, and there's not a lot of um, property managers or property uh, management companies that can provide a Section 8 house. Because, like you said, you do have to put in a little bit extra legwork, and that's with um, you know the upfront inspections, um, and then also you know the annual inspections that you have to do too. Um, with that being said, whenever you do buy a house from us, and we are fate placing your first tenant in the property and it is going to be a section eight tenant, then we incur all of those costs. Uh, we do, you know, the walkthrough, make sure we pass the inspection. And um, then, you know, from there on out, when you do have the yearly inspection, that is going to be a cost to the owner. But what we'll do is, you know, we'll send one of our techs out there, you know, walk the property before the inspection date, make sure that everything is going to uh, pass the inspection. If we notice anything that's not going to pass, then, you know, we'll make those repairs. Sometimes those repairs could fall on uh, the tenant to, to pay for, like if there was a you know, broken blind or something like that that we needed to do, then we could recoup those costs from the tenant. But there may be, you know, a couple extra hundred dollar expense per year that the investor has from Section 8. But I would totally agree with you. 
it's um, a good uh, program where you know they pay on the first of every month. There's no lie about that. Yeah, man, that's that government cheese, man. Get that government cheese, y'all. Now let's move up up the ladder. Now we're starting to get into some nice, nice stuff, right? We're starting to see a lot of owner occupied folks moving into these areas when we get into the B grade. So you said about half your portfolio uh, that you're managing for folks is C grade. So as we get up into the B grade, you know, what can we expect as investors? What's going to be the difference between B and C as far as price, rents, and tenant performance? So for the B grades, our price points are going to be 100000 to 130000 which this has always been the investor sweet spot. Um, a B grade is, you know, there's, like you said, homeowners in the area and there's, you know, rentals in the area as well. You're going to get more, you know, blue collar workers, factory workers, um, rents, you know, will rise 950 and up. So again, the tenant is qualifying at two and a half times the rent, then that's, you know, another bracket that we just went up. Um, I always, you know, coach investors too. It is a pretty safe play if you um, are thinking, you know, five years down the road, um, if you wanted to sell the property, there's definitely, you know, the option to be able to sell it to a homeowner or sell it to an investor. If I'm an investor client with you and I want to hold the property for five years, so I, I give myself a nice 130K B-class suburban property from you. You guys manage it for me for five years. And then I decide I want to move my money somewhere else. If you guys were going to sell my rental for me, but I wanted to try to maximize my exit price, what would you guys uh, recommend doing with my tenant? Um, so I've done this um, before for investors and a lot of times I'll look at the, the property and if um, I can, you know, think I can sell it to another investor who's looking for a cash flow property in that area around that um, price range. I'll definitely, you know, over five years, what I've seen, but I obviously can't predict what's going to happen. But um, what I've seen is, you know, people are still, you know, able to, you know, cash out some equity, even if I'm going to go and sell it to um, an investor. So we can keep the tenant is what I'm saying. Um, or, you know, if that's not going to work, if we think, you know, the, the price isn't good enough to sell or we can sell it um, at a higher price, if the tenant's not there, then, you know, we'll just look at the lease. Sometimes um, owners have bought out the lease, you know, paid them to move somewhere else or, you know, wait till that lease is, expires and not renew it for the tenant. And I guess the, the tree I'm trying to bark up is, um, you know, me and you both know being in the industry, selling all the real estate we do. If I'm in a nice neighborhood like this, generally speaking, owner occupied folks, they're going to pay more than the investor would. So if I buy a B class property with you, I'm holding it for a while and it comes time to where I'm ready to sell. And I really want to maximize that. You know, you guys, I, more or less, unless a ton of repairs are needed, more or less, I'm probably better off selling it empty. And you guys would be able to then, would you guys, you guys would be able to remove my tenant. And then would you guys also be able to spruce the home up for me, get it sell ready? Yeah, definitely. We do that, you know, routine, routinely, even if you were keeping the property and we had to move a tenant out and get a new one in there, then um, yeah, either way we have contractors who would go in and be able to, you know, see what work needed done to list the property. Perfect. And then uh, just, just for verification, I would assume that if I am an investor and I have some C-class inventory with you folks, uh, I'm guessing that my best bet anytime I want to sell, though, is to keep my tenants in there and we want to look for more investors because that's how we're going to get the best bang in the C and below, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then as far as like tenant profile, I understand the tenants, you know, now they're paying 950 plus, homes are in the 130K range. In the C grade area, you said, you know, we had a mix between folks working and folks on some type of government assistance. What types of tenants am I seeing in these B grade properties in Kansas City? I would definitely say it's a working class. Once you've placed a tenant, there's no need to make trips to the bank anymore because with Rent Tech Direct, you can now accept rent payments via ACH. This automatically transfers money from your tenant's bank account directly to yours, using the same technology that banks do to collect auto and mortgage payments. Your tenants can even log in and make payments with their web browser or their phone. All this comes backed by the highest rated customer support team in the industry. 
Certified by third parties and ranked number one by our clients year over year, you get unlimited free access to our US-based support team by phone, email, and chat, who will help you getting started or anywhere along the way. Um, you know, there's Kansas City is very eclectic, much like Ohio. There's lots of different job opportunities. Um, us right now, we're under a three and a half percent unemployment rate. So um, I, the, the jobs that we're seeing, you know, factory type work, um, medical type work. Um, Kansas City has a um, pretty uh, large campus called Cerner. It's a health technology company. They built out um, this huge campus in South Kansas City, which is um, a, a pretty uh, prominent area for you know B grade rentals. Um, they added about you know eighteen thousand new jobs in the last two years. So um, it's definitely working class, uh, but again, still you know probably families because those are typically two to four bedroom houses. Are you, are you seeing um, any any vouchers? And if so, like, can you give me a ballpark percentage wise? Like it's like 10%, 20? Yeah, I would say about 10 to 15%. Um, just because Section 8, as you know, will only pay so much for, you know, a three bedroom house. So if the rent's, you know, 1200, um, Section 8 for us probably won't pay that on a three bedroom house. So we really have to look at that. And yeah, it would probably be 10 to 15%. Okay. Now, as far as like the housing stock, the housing inventory, if I'm in a B grade neighborhood, is it, is it primarily single families or is there still like a decent amount of uh, duplexes like in the C areas? So yeah, we haven't even really touched on that. Um, there's not a lot of multifamily inventory in Kansas city. Um, if I do get something multifamily, it is typically in the C grade, but, um, I mean, obviously I'm in Ohio too. So I know the multifamily up there. I've done tons of four units up to 97 units up there. But in Kansas City, the largest I've done is um, a four unit and we do not, we maybe get a couple of those a year. So yeah, definitely more single families, especially in the B grade. Okay. And what about like um, tenancy, right? Um, you know, you got single family homes primarily. So I assume you guys have a pretty decent average length of stay because, you know, multifamily folks, they come and go a lot more often. What type of tenancy can I ex expect on average to see out of like a B-class tenant in Kansas City as well as a C-class tenant? So in Kansas City, we see about two and a half to three year um, for a lease average. Um, for the B-grade neighborhoods. Yeah, I, honestly, for, for both, that's pretty much across the board is what we see. Um, you know, the, I would say the difference, you know, when looking at that, typically, you know, if a tenant does move out, the C-grade is going to incur more cost. Um, that C-grade tenant just you know, typically doesn't seem to take as good of care um, of, of the property as a B-grade tenant does. But um, on average, the, the terms of the lease, the length is going to be about two and a half to three years for either. Okay, cool. And then um, you had said you, you don't like the DNF, so you guys don't really do much. You don't dabble in the DNF. About 50% of the U.S. portfolio is C-class. About how much of that portfolio that you guys have over there is going to be B-class rentals? I would say about 40%. Okay, and then that leaves us with the final grade, the A grade, which folks, just so you guys know, if this is the first time you've ever watched one of these Ultimate Guide interviews where we talk about a market, it's totally normal that uh, a management company similar to US Reeb would have an inventory of 10% or, you know, oftentimes even less of A-grade properties. Because typically in most of these Midwestern markets, the A-grade properties are primarily owner-occupied. The market is totally driven by owner-occupied buyers and sellers. You know, this is where the wealthy fo uh, folks are living, right? This is where the people making six figures and above live. You know, we're not usually seeing a lot of investment in these types of areas, but you guys, you know, you still have a few. How did you come by acquiring those in the portfolio and how's the performance like with those rentals? Yeah, so, you know, with the 10% um, of our portfolio, obviously that's not a lot that we've done over the past um, five or six years, but, um, you know, we've, we've done enough to know that, you know, these areas, you know, for three or four years ago, we could definitely, you know, buy and we could still hit that 1% rule. And, you know, there was, you know, select investors who understood, you know, a, you know, higher end tenant paying $1,500 a month, they were willing to pay, 
you know, $160,000 for the property. Um, and these areas, you know, the taxes are higher, so that obviously um, brings your cash flow down as well. Um, I honestly have seen the, the tenants stay the least am amount of time here, um, just because a lot of times these tenants are preparing to buy their own house. So they're only you know, occupying for a year or two until um, you know, they wanna buy their own house. Um, sometimes they wanna buy that house that they're renting. I've done that too. Um, so the benefits, you know, I would definitely say you're, you're definitely having a, a safe tenant. I've always seen the tenants leave the house immaculate. Um, but the downfall would definitely be, you know, the higher, um, you know, price point and, um, you know, the, the length of the lease is going to be a little bit longer. So that's, that's some great insight. Um, as far as like the rental prices, you said, you said the, the pricing is going to start for the home to be purchased at like 160 and up. What about the lease prices? What can investors expect to see? Um, so now that's probably going to get us like 1450 and up for a rent. Okay. And you said the market in general has a very small amount of multifamily. So I would assume in these A-grade neighborhoods, it's probably non-existent. Yeah. I mean, at this point, they're, they're building, you know, multifamilies in Kansas City to be able to, you know, accommodate like high-end rentals. But uh, yeah, we don't have any at this time. Okay. So as far as you personally, what is, uh, you know, what is like your sweet spot? What do you really like to see investors buying? Like if I'm an investor and I come to you and I got you know, three, 400 K to play with. And, uh, I'm kind of open. I'm, I don't want to be in the riskiest investment, but I'm not totally afraid of risk. Where do you usually want to push me and why? Um, so I love a B grade area just because I, you know, am looking, you know, down the road just to, you know, see, like you said, if I wanted to pull my um, cash out and I had another investment opportunity or something, it would be um, a little bit easier to do that in a B grade area. Um, on my inventory, I even um, grade things as C plus, and um, it's a little bit different than a C in my eyes. And I can kind of, you know, coach or talk anyone through this, but um, a C plus is like I was talking about those gentrified areas that are like right on the cusp. And I see, you know, just a lot of, um, you know, money being put into these areas and new homeowners and things like that. So I definitely like that C plus too because I just see a lot of um, opportunity there. So I would say C plus to B grade is my sweet spot. Now, if we if we were to refer to uh, the info that we've put together for the the properties we've given, like the official grade on the scale of C, we got Kansas City sixty four one twenty eight, sixty four one thirty, sixty four one thirty two, and then we got Northeast Kansas City. Which of those four neighborhoods would you consider to be that C plus, that nice little like hidden gem, so to speak? I would say 64128. That is um, the area that I, like I said, used to sell there for $50,000 and now the houses are selling for $100,000 and I have um, homeowners buying them too. That's some serious um, like quality on the ground insight, guys. And that's why it's important when you guys are investing out of state to partner with folks who are actually on the ground because Google street view, looking up numbers. I know a lot of y'all, you guys get, you guys get like caught up in the analysis paralysis uh, mentality and you're just looking at numbers, but sometimes you gotta, you know, you gotta roll up your sleeves. You gotta talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about. You gotta talk to somebody like McKaylee who manages hundreds of tenants. If we were to just look at the data, you know, from a 20,000 square foot, uh, 20,000 foot in the air view here, I would have assumed that of those four neighborhoods, that was the, the worst performing neighborhood because we have a low, lower owner-occupied percentage and we also have the lowest median income as far as like the city data and the zip codes go. But those numbers, those metrics, those can be skewed, guys. And you really got to get on the ground with somebody like her. So you might think that you need to pay more for properties in the three neighborhoods that are actually not performing as well or not going to turn out to do as well for you. So that's why it's important you guys connect with folks like McKaylee. McKaylee, if any of uh, the investors listening to the show right now, they want to they wanna invest in Kansas City, what is your sales process like? I mean, we'll put all U.S. Reeb's contact info in the show notes below. And U.S. Reeb has appeared in several episodes on Holton Wise TV, and they'll continue to do so. But uh, what would like be your sales process like? If I'm an investor, can you walk me through what happens after I reach out to you? 
Yeah, so I actually keep um, all of my inventory private. Um, we have a pretty large portfolio. So I have, you know, around 200 properties at a time that are in some type of um, acquisition, rehab, or um, sell stage. So I have typically, you know, a spread of inventory that I can show someone. I definitely like to get on the phone with them, learn a little bit, you know, about um, if it's their first time, if they have properties already, what kind of criteria um, have they come up with already? Um, for their first investment or you know, second, third investment. And so after we you know, have that conversation, then I am able to you know, select some properties that they would you know, possibly be interested in, give them as much information as possible as I have on the properties, you know, what's been done in the rehab and everything. Um, and then once investors are ready to move forward and purchase a property with us, it's a super easy process. I actually get to keep and continue working with them throughout that process, um, you know, signing the contract, doing inspections, appraisals, and um, actually closing the property. So uh, we've made it pretty seamless. And um, then at that point, we hand it over to the property management where they'll also have, you know, a contact um, there as well. And the property management, that's all handled in-house by you guys as well, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, beautiful. So this is like, one-stop shop. I'm an investor. I get to get on the phone with you. You get to talk to me about what I want, my thoughts on the market, maybe steer me in some better directions I didn't know about. And then you guys handle everything. So repairs, maintenance, evictions. And as we discussed earlier, even if it gets to the point a few years down the road and I'm in a property that uh, did appreciate or is in a nice neighborhood, you guys have the option to sell to another one of your investors or you can actually get my property sell ready out on the open market to sell to traditional owner occupied buyers so I can maximize my return. Yeah, we do it all. Special thanks to McKaylee for coming on the show today and talking to us about the Kansas City market. If you guys are interested in investing in Kansas City, all of the contact info for US Reeb can be found in the show notes below. If you want to invest in Cleveland real estate, Holton Wise, we can handle that for you from top to bottom. But if you are interested in any other markets in the U.S., we are dedicated to providing you guys with turnkey vendors on the ground in those markets, much like U.S. Reap. In addition to what I spoke with McKaylee about today about the Kansas City market, we're also going to have the folks from U.S. Reeb on Holton Wise TV a few more times. We're going to want to talk to them about the Dayton market and the Cincinnati market. I'd love to get ultimate guides for those two markets put together by Q2 of 2020. In addition to all these other markets we are offering for you guys, if you guys are interested in the Birmingham, Alabama market, I want you to check the show notes below. We had Maureen McCann from Spartan Invest on the Ask James Wise Show to talk about everything and anything related to the Birmingham, Alabama market. So if that's a market you're interested in, click the show notes below to take a look at that one. And lastly, folks, in our opinion, these turnkey providers are the best of the best, the cream of the crop in their individual markets. I just want to leave the disclosure out there that we do not control what they are doing so you need to make sure you are still watching the educational content here on Holton Wise TV to see the things you need to do to properly vet any turnkey provider including Holton Wise in real estate you need to trust but you need to verify I do not want to see any investor out there getting caught up buying real estate not doing their proper due diligence as you guys all know the Clayton Morris saga if you haven't seen our full-length documentary about all the scam allegations that's in the show notes as well a lot of that stuff has to do with investors not doing their proper due diligence so definitely take a look at that that's all I've got for you today as always I'm James Wise with Holton Wise and this is real estate investing made easy Expanding your real estate holdings to multiple markets is a great way to reduce your risk. Birmingham, Alabama features an unemployment rate that is well below the national average. In fact, Birmingham's growing tech scene has been highlighted by both Fords and Barons. That 
coupled with Birmingham's low price to rent ratio is why so many investors from around the US have been flocking to the area to put their money to work. Spartan Invest has helped hundreds of investors successfully buy cash flowing real estate in Birmingham. With an average tenant stay of 39 months, it's easy to see why Spartan Invest maintains an annual occupancy rate above 95%. To learn more about the turnkey opportunities in Birmingham, Alabama, contact Spartan Invest today at 205-202-4118 or visit them online at spartaninvest.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.